Hi, I'm Melissa Coates. This video is about permissions in the Power BI service, which are directly managed by content owners. Why is this important, you ask? Since it's business users throughout the organization who are responsible for securing the content they publish, it's important to be aware of the breadth of permissions from an administration, governance, auditing, security, and user training perspectives. In part one of this two-part video series, I'm going to walk through this diagram. In part two, I'll show you what the options look like for each item in the Power BI service. First, we have workspace permissions. There are four levels, admin, member, contributor, and viewer. The workspace permissions apply to objects stored in the workspace, such as dashboards, reports, and data sets. The sharing feature applies to one specific dashboard or report within a workspace and is always read-only. This can be helpful when you want a group or user to be able to view just one item within a workspace. You can sort of think of sharing as an exception to workspace security, or if you don't need or want to utilize an app for distributing content. When you share a report or dashboard, the ability for the recipient to reshare it is enabled by default, but can be deselected. There's also an option to allow users to build new content using the data set, which is underlying the specific report or dashboard that's being shared. This adjusts the permission of the underlying data set. If all of the default options remain selected, then read, reshare, and build permissions will be granted when a sharing operation occurs. This works when sharing even if the data set resides in another workspace. The data set permissions can be adjusted independently if necessary. An app in Power BI is a packaged up set of reports and dashboards that you want to publish collectively. Note this is a totally different thing than a Power App and different from the mobile app. When we publish a Power BI app, it also has its own set of permissions. Since apps are always read-only, the most basic thing is effectively the app grants read-only permissions to the reports and dashboards included in the app. There is also an option to allow users to connect to the app's underlying data sets using the build permission. Like we talked about sharing, this will adjust the build permissions of the underlying data set. Note that with apps, this only works if the data set resides in the same workspace as the app. There's also an option to allow users to make a copy of the reports contained within the app, which is essentially a save as type of functionality. Be really careful with allowing this if you have your reports branded with something that indicates who published it, or if the report displays a trustworthiness indicator or logo. Subscriptions can be created on a Power BI report page. Recipients receive an image of the report by email plus a link back to the original report. When creating this subscription, there is an option to also give access to the report which creates a read-only sharing operation on that reporter dashboard. Quick side note, a paginated report subscription works a little differently than Power BI subscriptions, but that's a topic for another day. Data flows have an owner assigned, as do data sets. This signifies who may set scheduled refresh and so forth. There is also the concept of row-level security, which is defined within Power BI Desktop, but invoked within the Power BI service. Row-level security is handled with DAX expressions, which control what is displayed on reports and dashboards for each viewer. For instance, in situations when sales team members may only view their own customers. The last item is outside of the Power BI service, but is still very important. And this is the file location for where PBIX files are saved before they are published to the Power BI service. Preferably, this is a shared or team location in OneDrive or SharePoint, which has built-in versioning and backups. We also want to use this type of location for securely storing data and reports, which are exported from the Power BI service. And that wraps up the initial walkthrough. Check the notes below for the link to part two of this video series. 
If you like this diagram, you can download a copy on my diagrams page at CoatesDataStrategies.com. And if you like this content, please check out my training offerings listed on my website. Thanks for watching and keep learning.